Hi everybody, this is another Flying Cookie video and on this video I'm not going to explain how to do it but how I did uh, modify my um, Sea Laser Design uh, GoPro camera mount. Uh, this product is a uh, nice, pretty nice product but it comes with some design flaws that I didn't like and since uh, I got um, over 25 years of experience dealing with RC cars and trucks I use that experience to improve the product and make it better okay and this originally was a three axis camera mount and I converted into a two axis because this thing is not going to be mounted on an airplane this thing is going to be mounted on a quadcopter and I don't really need this thing to pan one side to the other so I just eliminate the, the need to use a uh, servo in the top so this camera came with this uh, mount over here and this is the mount that you will you would um, screw under the fuselage of a uh, airplane or a helicopter and then you will have to use a uh, servo small servo and the servo will go on this part and you will made the camera um, you know pan to one side to, uh, or the other to left or right but since uh, this thing is right it's being used in a quad cocktail if I want to look to the right or to the left what I do is just use the rudder and just rotate the, um, the rudder control and just rotate to the right and the left so I don't need this and by doing this small modification uh, you will cut weight on your aircraft okay um, Another thing that I did on this particular um, camera mount is that I put over here like a sticky pad. It's like a urethane soft sticky pad. So that way when you mount the GoPro, it will stay in place and it will eliminate a little bit the vibration. And also, since this thing is wider than the GoPro itself, I didn't want this thing you know to slide to one side or, or the other I use this uh, radio shack uh, fusion feed and these the ones that normally people use for putting on the speakers so the speakers when you get bass and everything the speakers they just don't, don't start moving around or anything or they're using any other stereo equipment and this thing is really cheap so you can go to radio shack and buy it I already used something in some other uh, projects, so I put two um, on the on this side, so that way there's not that much play. And to secure the camera, apparently this thing was designed to use like a zip tie, but you know every time you want to remove the camera, you will have to you know cut the zip tie and keep putting a new one. So I didn't do that. Why this? I purchased um, this. Uh, Barry straps, this is for the T-Rex Align T-Rex 600 and you can use the Barry strap, Velcro strap to securely uh, um, strap the GoPro into into the camera mount and I'm just going to show you real quick how I got it done and once you strap this thing the right way this thing won't move, it won't fall or anything. This thing's gonna stay there. So wrap this thing around. GoPro is going nowhere. It's going to stay there. Okay, so that's why I did to keep the GoPro in place on this camera now. Okay, so let me just you know, get the GoPro off this so I can show the other modifications that I did on, on this thing. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing that I didn't like about this particular product was that the uh, the, ax, the 
the axis, there are no board bearing support like most uh, camera mounts on the market. Uh, they are mostly, um, they got this, uh, for example, in the top. Over here, it was using like a really, really, really tiny screw, uh, like the one that you would use to uh, secure the servos into the camera mount. It's like a 1.5 millimeter screw. It's a self-tapping screw, and this thing then came with a hole to mount where the screw goes. So you have to kind of figure it out where the hole goes. And I mean, uh, you know, the first time I mount the screw. I mean, it felt like it was, you know, that secure, and it felt like it was that center, so I have to use the, the caliper to measure everything and just mount the, the screw again. But then again, I didn't feel that that screw was secure property. And the other thing was that the servos that this thing could, I, um, I, when I started using it for the first time with my uh, flight controller that also comes with the PTC uh, feature that controls the get the camera level. Doesn't matter in which angle the back cutter is, thin, is, is, is tilting, it will keep the camera right at the spot. Um, it, it came with this uh, uh, Ternigy TD9E servos, and these servos they are really fast at 0.10 seconds. The problem with this is that the servo was reacting so fast to the changes of the angle where the quadcopter was moving that it was creating some inertia and it was jittering too much and it was uncontrollable. This thing, is, it, it looked like it had like, like a nervous breakdown and it was a problem. I figured out that the right, the way to go with this is just putting like a really, really slow servos. So the solution for that was uh, buying high-tech HS55 servos, and that pretty much solved the problem. I still got some more. Uh, this thing still does some more gearing, so I still looking to see which servo would be the adequate servo for. For this uh, type of camera mount, so if you guys got any ideas or any servos that are really smooth, really slow, um, they have to be uh, 22 millimeters by 22 by 11 millimeters. That's the dimensions the servo have to be, so that way it will fit perfectly over here. So if you guys know of any servos that would fit, uh, uh, that that would be really super smooth for a camera mount this size, you know, camera mount is designed for. The GoPro, I will appreciate that. You can just uh, write back to me, leave it on the comment section below, or you can just send us a personal message, and then I will make another video of, uh, uh, where I will show this flight with, uh, 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 with the, the proper servo. But uh, the servo that I got right now is working way, way better than this one. It's like it's almost livable. So then again, I have to um, put this. Uh, um, I have to replace the tiny 1.5 millimeter screw that I have here and mount a um, uh, uh, 3 millimeter screw and I put a nut in the back as you can see here there's a nut right there and then I'm, there's another lock nut there's two lock nuts and in the front I put a watch it and I also a grease it so then that way it will make the, the, the movements you know, really smooth and pretty much I did the same thing on, on, on this axis over here on the side. It, 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 it didn't came with a screw, it came with this uh, little piece of rod using these spacers and using this, uh, this piece over here that, that secured everything with a, self, uh, with, a, with a set screw. And this thing was so thin that this thing was giving me some play. And I didn't like that, you know, because it wasn't, you know, firm. It's supposed to be firm and steady. You're not supposed to have any kind of play. So I put, uh, for example, on, on the top over here, I put a 50 millimeter, uh, three millimeter by 50 millimeter uh, a screw with two uh, lock nuts and a washer. And down here, as you can see, I put a 25 millimeter uh, by 
three millimeter by 25 millimeter uh, screw, and I'm using three lock nuts. One lock nut to secure it to uh, the side of this uh, uh, of the, the of the camera mount, of the, of the frame of the camera mount, and I put two over here that they are sandwiched around this part of where the camera goes, and I put watches and I grease it. And now the, this thing is more firm and it works more precise, and that's why I decided to do that. And it, it's working way better than the way it was uh, designed from the factory. Uh, the, this company, C, uh, C Laser Designs, they make a similar camera mount like this one, but it's way smaller because it's designed to use the small CCTV uh, cameras like the people use on FPV, that they are way lighter and way smaller than this one. So the way that the way that particular camera mount is designed, since it's, it's designed for a smaller camera, uh, things like this, or the screw, this is the 1.5 millimeter screw that goes here will work perfect on that. But this is a heavier camera. You need the right equipment. You cannot just, you know, uh, design this to work with something that was meant to work with a lighter camera. So that's why I was forced to do this type of modification. Uh, the final modification that I did over here involved me using the Dremel tool because, um, uh, for example, right here in the top, when you mount the, the camera, this thing from the factory came with this opening so the microphone of the camera, you know, it, it won't be obstructed so you can hear everything outside. But the push button to turn, you know, to take the, turn on the, you know, the, the recording of the camera, it was partially blocked, so I just Dremel this section over here, so that way it's more accessible, because the way it was, you, you would have to use almost, you, you would have to use your nail to try to push the, the button down, and I didn't like that, and the other thing that I did with the Dremel, beside this, is this part over here, it was lower, it looks just like, uh, this, this side over here, you know, the arch, as you can see, the arch on this side is way lower uh, on, on the back side of the, of, of the camera mount. But you can see that right now, this side is higher, so why this side, I took the Dremel and I Dremel, I, I, I removed all this uh, material over here, so that way this camera mount, when the clock up the tilt forward, it can go higher the way it's supposed to be, because the way it was before, this thing was hidden, you know, the upper part of this arch, and it was, uh, uh, it was impairing this uh, to work properly, beside that, it was making the server work harder, and, you know, eventually that would burn out the server. And, I mean, also the, the software that comes with the flight controller, that also controls this camera mount, on my uh, quadcopter, and you can also limit how far you want this thing to go up. But the nice thing is, it goes up as much as um, uh, uh, it needs to be, and it stops, it doesn't even touch this part anymore. But the way this thing was before, even if I adjust uh, the, the angle the proper way on the software, still was, uh, 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 it, it wasn't going high enough to. Uh, keep the camera looking straight forward, so that's why I decided to, uh, 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 you know, remove some of this material, and now it's working perfect. So, this is a great product, but it needs some, uh, uh, it got some, I would say, some with design flaws, uh, because then again, apparently the person that designed and built this particular product, he designed a base of the uh, the product that's designed for that, that is uh, uh, meant to be used with a smaller camera. But when you make something that it's going to work with something larger and heavier, then you have to make everything beefier so that way it can work the proper way. If this thing was ball bearing support, it would be even better. But I just did the second best thing, and then again, like I said, I just grease it and put some petroleum jelly and it's working smooth, it's working perfect so it's almost like it was uh, 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 
uh, uh, uh, like this thing was more very supported. I made the holes bigger by using uh, body rim or like the, the the ones that you use on your RC cars to make the holes for the body. Uh, you can use a drill bit too, but what I would recommend you to do is make sure you don't make the hole way too big because then you're going to have play. This thing right now is perfect. It's zero play here or here. And I just did the, the, the screws there are like uh, uh, 20 millimeters, so uh, thick. So I made the hole like 3.9 millimeters, kind of like that. So now this thing is... Uh, 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 it, it, it's, it, and then you know when I put the screw, I just keep screwing it until you know if uh, because it was making like a little thread, so that way you know I will uh, 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 make the screw you know keep going until it goes smooth and it's tight. It, it, it got like a tight fit right now, so it's really really perfect. I, I, I like the way this thing's working right now. So just remember, if you buy this product, you have to do this. This type of modifications that I just mentioned, uh, so in that way this product can work properly. Other than that, this thing is just gonna be a piece of crap and a waste of money. And the website that sells this product, they do sell two versions: one with servos and one without servos. Buy it without the servos. The servos, maybe it's my my flight controller, the camera control, my flight controller might be uh, no app adequate to make the servos you know work properly maybe there are flight controllers or gyros that are designed for gimbal camera mounts where you can adjust the speed of the servos and that way the servo will work the right way but the one that I have doesn't do that so maybe the servo might be good with a different type of gyro uh, but it's not good with mine so you have to use slow servos but uh, We'll see down the road if I can find, you know, servos that they are um, more adequate, they are better for this particular camera mount. And another thing that I like about this is the way it's really pretty light compared to some of the other uh, GoPro camera mounts on the market. And we just wait it. Uh, it waits by itself. It weighs 920 grams with the two servos mounted. If you use this as a two axis camera mount and no three axis camera mount, uh, with the GoPro install, it weighs 189 grams, so it's still light. It's, it's really, it's really pretty, pretty light. And finally, to conclude the video, the way I secure this thing into my quadcopter, uh, I got this quarter inch uh, screw with this thumb nut over here and I got like a plastic washer so the quadcopter frame that I use is the VC450 uh, uh, it's uh, the same thing like the white spy uh, quadcopter and it's working with I, I did upgrade the center plates on this quadcopter with this uh, with a four tablet uh, on the front and the single tab on, 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 I mean the fourth tab on, on, on the bottom and the single tab on the front so it will make this camera mount more firmer and then what I do is I just remove this uh, the top the top nut over here then again like I said this 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 screw that I got is the, the ones that you will use on the tripods they set up on the eBay for like uh, 30 I make for like three or four dollars. Then I just put the knot over here. A little bit hard to reach, but not impossible. Okay, so press down. Just put it really tight so the camera don't come out of mouth nice and steady. And it's pretty much it. And then the only thing that you have to do is just plug the servos to the uh, this extension uh, cables that I put on the flight controller, and it will be too good to go. So, when all the quadcopters, you can just if you wish to 
have this thing permanently permanently installed in any quadcopter helicopter and then you can just put you know like normal screws and everything and that, that will that will go that will work fine too but i decided to use this because um I want this to be a versatile um, aircraft and I want to be able to add or remove attachments so that way if I wish to just do uh, just a line of sight regular flight and if I don't want to take any videos or anything then I would remove this and that way the aircraft can uh, give me even more flying time because it's, uh, I got to remove that weight if I'm not taking an aerial video there's, there's no point of me having this thing mounted. Uh, um, into the aircraft, so that's why I, I made it this way. Okay, so this is pretty much the end of the of the review of how I did upgrade this um, uh, two uh, three axis camera mount that was modified uh, for two axis uh, from C Laser Designs. And you know, please don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching, everybody.